we are the first African generation to do this. It's just simply doable, even though it's in deep dark Africa. It's doable. We must do it better than anybody else because we are the best. Come on then, let's go. <laughs> it looks all grown up. Oh, my baby. <laughs> Still grinning away then. Rough and Tumble started out in 1996. It really was an accident. My kids ran out of pyjamas, and I used to make clothing for women. So I decided that I'd just make some pyjamas for my kids. And I told my girlfriend. Oh, she said, fantastic idea. Can I have five for my kids? You know, I told somebody else, a sister-in-law of mine, and she said, oh, she'd like, you know, six sets. So my husband then said to me that, don't stick with pajamas alone. Why don't you just try some shorts, some skirts, some tops? So I took my car, my trunk of clothing, my kids, a cooler full of drinks, cold water, and we sold in every single bazaar that was going on. I was now hiring more tailors, we were producing more, and we realized that we needed a retail outlet. This is the tiny space we started. This was the humble beginnings of Rough and Tumble. We took all my kids, put them in all the clothes, and we took pictures. It was the first time that anybody had ever marketed children's clothes like that. Not a clip out of a, a foreign magazine, but actually using Nigerian children the response was incredible. People actually wanting the Made in Nigeria garments. Mm -hmm. It's like, where's the label? I want the label outside. I want everybody to know I'm wearing rough and tumble. And I couldn't believe it. We ran out of labels one year, and a child refused to take his shirt. His mother says, when the labels come, he'll take his shirt then. But it must have rough and tumble on it. And by the third year, the shop was too small. I looked up one day and I noticed for the first time that there was an empty building in front of my shopping mall. And I thought, no, you're not going to do this. This is a whole building. And I thought, oh, yes, you are. I couldn't get any finance from any bank. Even though I meticulously put all my money in the bank, no bank would give me money. I thought, you're talking about 500,000 Naira rent. I thought, yes, OK, all right. So we sold for 13 million last year. What's 500,000 Naira? I went to Italy and I sat in Benetton and I said, this is what I want to do in Nigeria. And I went to London and I sat in Gap and I said, this is what I want to do in Nigeria. I'm going to put the workshop upstairs and I'm going to have a beautiful boutique downstairs, the first of its kind in Nigeria. This is where I work and this is where I have my sample, fabric sample books and sample fabrics where I decide which fabric to use for what design. It's drawn into this book and it gets transferred into this file where it's drawn in better detail all the different things that we want to do on it it's labeled it's given a code i started going to the lagos business school they were so helpful and this is our mission statement and our mission is to creatively clothe children to international standards in functional durable and versatile clothing that give comfort and value to our customers now we needed staff handbooks that explained the rules for working at Rough and Tumble and what your benefits are. We needed job descriptions. This is where everything gets made. Um, each tailor gets what he has to do in a day. And this is where we keep a monthly evaluation of who does what. So everybody gets to see how well they're doing. We are very hardworking people as a people, Nigerians. But sometimes motivation is very low because the problems that people face are greater than the problems that I can solve as a business owner. The only thing I can do is offer people employment. We try and pay people a living wage and treat people with um, respect and, and um, decency. And even though everybody says that Nigerian workers steal, I don't believe that of my staff. And I do believe that they do not steal from me because I believe that we have been able to integrate our goals, the goals of the company, their personal goals, 
my goals, my vision. People want to be part of the dream. My name is on the payroll the way everybody else's name is on the payroll. I get my, my salary the way everybody gets their salary. In fact, sometimes I don't get paid when we don't have enough money, you know, but everybody else gets paid. We have three months maternity leave where it's paid. We offer housing loans to, to the staff. I don't have to do it, but they, there's nowhere else for them to go. So it's part of what the company has to do. We are currently selling about 26,000 units of clothing. We're doing about $800,000 worth of turnover. I'm trying to conclude business with a gentleman who wants to open up a franchise in Abuja. And we also want to open more shops in, in Lagos. I'm sure my son's really going to like this. We don't export now. Export to the West African coast, yes. All along the West African coast, yes. But to say America or to England, I'm not interested in it at all. If 40% of the 120 million people in Nigeria is children, I have the potential of a huge market here. At different stages, we've had different challenges. The electricity supply doesn't get better. It gets worse. So you find you have a generator. You've worn it out in four years. We buy a new generator. This is money we could have used to do something else. My generator broke down one day. This lady had ordered a shirt for her son's birthday. I had to tell her that, I'm sorry, we couldn't make this shirt. And she said to me, Madam, the problems of, your, of operating in your business are not mine. Once you open your doors for business, then make sure you deliver. And you know, I thought, she's so right. And the challenges keep coming. The biggest one right now is the ban on the importation of fabric. The ban means the federal government sees it as a threat for fabric to be imported into Nigeria. Now we have 96 textile mills, of which only 20 are in operation. 20 textile mills are not going to meet the needs of 120 million people. And when the reserves that we have now finish, I might have to say to my factory workers, you have to stay at home. And it's very painful because we have built this thing with so much hope. Made in Nigeria by Nigerians. Every business is affected by corruption. Mine is no exception. I had to hire a tax consultant. There's a booklet, but nobody can find it to buy anywhere that tells you what you can do and cannot do. But you can't find it because the ministry won't give it to you. Because when they give it to you, then you know the rules. It's better you don't know the rules, so they catch you doing what you're not supposed to be doing. Lift your feet when you walk. Lift your feet when you walk. Even though I have European heritage, my mother always said to me, I should be proud to be a Nigerian. I will never forget the day I was in Zurich, and I brought out my Nigerian passport, and I was treated so badly, so badly, and it, it hurt, you know, it really, it really did hurt. And, you know, I asked why, and, you know, she said that there's nothing good about Nigerians. And I said, it is so untrue, you know, that there's, whew, excuse me. There's so much goodness in Nigeria. The possibilities of Nigeria, they are so immense. And we are so capable, and we are so dynamic as a people.